Okay, uh, hello my friend, hopefully that you are doing great. So in this lesson, I want to share you how to swipe the mobile screen uh, based on some specific conditions because you already learn about swipe horizontally and swipe vertically on the mobile screen. But we just swipe uh, maybe from left to right, right to left, from top to bottom or bottom to the to top. But we didn't specify any specific condition where we need to continue or stop the swipe action. So today lesson, I want to show you how to specify some specific condition and then we can decide whether we need to continue for the swipe action or we need to stop the swipe action. Because in the real texting application, we need to swipe until we see some specific condition and then we can trigger another action. That's my sense, right? So now go back to our uh, mobile screen here. You can see, for example, this is the swipe screen. What I want to do that, for example, uh, I will try to swipe from the right to the left here. Still, I can see something related to, for example, the, the tag name is extensible uh, on the screen. So at that time, I will stop uh, swipe from the right to the left. This is the target. So I just want to mention here that, so based on your testing application, you can specify all the specific condition but for this application, I will specify something like I will swipe from the right to the left until I see the extendable card here, okay? So now let's try to open the <coughs> IDE and under the API learning buckets, you create a new class with the name uh, something like uh, swipe, uh, let me think any order name in here so we have swipe horizontally swipe vertically so we can swipe uh, maybe swipe until okay something like swipe until so the name here is something like the utility class so in the next lesson we will learn how to create utility class later okay so in this swipe until i want to resume all of the code from swipe uh, horizontally here so that means you need to copy so don't think about anything like duplicated code or something like that because we are still learning about how to interact with the web element on the page. This is the, not the real code in your project, yes? So at the time you have some real code in your project, we need to create some utility classes or functions to handle swipe action later, okay? So now I will uh, retain all of the all the steps here and what I want to do here I just want to try to drop some logic here first and then we can start okay so for example why uh, why something like oh this is out of the main method sorry uh, so I want to swipe from uh, left to right or uh, right to left right or uh, right to left uh, until I see the uh, extendable card something like extendable card and the swipe um, time is uh, uh, let dance this because you can see here the totally time we have one two three four five six right so the maximum time we need to swipe from the right to the left is just five right so maybe like why um we can specify something uh, specify something here like uh why is not on uh not seeing the target card and uh, the swipe uh, time should be less than or equal five, right? Less than or less than, I think should be less than five. Okay, so less than five, we will do something like swipe from right to left here okay so we need to declare something like not seeing target card here what's the dash mean right 
So in this case, we can do something like uh, we can create a function, um, you know, a functional interface outside. But I don't want to make things uh, complicated at the beginning time. So let's try to put the logic, this logic inside. Okay, we will check this one inside. So I can put something. Let me cut this one. And then I put it here. Maybe this should be a boolean value, right? Equal something I will declare later. Target clock not seen, the target clock here. Okay, and now the swipe time, I want to in this swipe time equal zero now. And after I swipe, I will try to increase the swipe time, right? I will increase the swipe time here. And I will continue uh, the, till the swipe time is still less than five, right? So let's see here, not see in the target clock. So in this case, we need to open the FBM desktop. I already opened it here and it's not hard for you when you can specify uh, this element on the screen. So in this case, actually, we don't have uh, any uh, ID or content description for this specific element here, the text here, you see. So we will use expect, and in this case, we do the value from the text here. Let me try to copy it first. So I will try to find the uh, element on the page, and maybe it will throw something like an element is not found, right? So I will put in the try cast block, okay? So I will put try. It's very important to put in the try cast block, okay? Because uh, at, the, at the screen where uh, it doesn't contain the card, the target card, it will throw an element is not found on the mobile screen, right? And it will terminate our card. So we need to put in the try cast block here. So this is a cast block. Maybe we just use something like zero exception here. And then uh, we will do nothing in this case, okay? We can handle in the locker later. But now what I want to do that I view something like not seeing the target block now equal, uh, let me see, equal the FBM driver dot five element. Okay, we can copy this one. Uh, copy the five element by this back. I don't think we need to copy this one. So we just need to find element by its back. Here and then I can specify something like uh, double slash star where uh, as the text equal uh, this value and I will check whether is display okay so the is display methods will return for us uh, a boolean value here you can see to check whether the element on the um, on the, the, the screen is display or not so in this case we will try to reassign here so if we are on the target the screen. So that means the whole thing here will return a true value, right? A true value here. So from four first, and this is the true value. So I think we can put this one out here as well, right? And I can put something here while uh, this is, why we are not here. So I put something here uh, when, while we are not seeing the target card, uh, not seeing the target card here, should be true first. Should be true first, right? So when we not see in the target card, we will continue to swipe. So in this case, uh, so I can declare another pooling value here like boolean e target card display equal this one so if the target card 
display, I will try to reassign not C in the target card equal false because we already see it, right? In this case. And then now I will swipe from the right to the left. So in this case, I will cut uh, this one and then I will delete this one because we don't need it anymore faces here. Okay. So you can see this is the logic here. Swipe time equals zero, not see in the target graph is true at the beginning time. Okay. So you can change the logic uh, by yourself based on your application. But this is the, the target application that I'm talking about. So while we are not seeing the target card and the swipe time is less than five, we will try to have a new pooling value that we check whether it target card display uh, by using the tag on the target card here. So if the target card display we will try to reassign the not see in the target card value to false. So that means we try to, to make this one false, right? And in this case, if it is false, uh, if it is false, so I think we don't need to swipe, uh, right? Uh, if it is false, so that means we don't need to swipe anymore. Right. Uh, otherwise than that, we need to swipe in the catch here, right? Okay. We can put here. I just want to change the logic a little. So if we are on the target here, we don't need to do anything else. But otherwise than that, we will fall down in the catch block here and we will try to swipe from the right to the left. Right, and then we will try to increase the swipe time here, and then we can do something like, um, you know, um, we check again here. So this is the loop, and we control the time to swipe here by the swipe time. Okay, it seems good now. Uh, let me try to run this one. Okay, so before running this, I need to open the terminal and start the IPM server like before. Okay. Now I will click on the run button on the main methods here. Open the terminal here. So it send the capability, the design capability to the IPM server, open the browser app to see. Let's try to unlock the device screen. And by the way, sorry for any background noise around, okay? Now it's opening the target application. Try to click on spy and it will check. Okay, there's something from here, no such file of, you know, um, the thing here is the device is now locked again. So I think it's affected by the appium desktop. So let me try to terminate the tag here. Uh, try to close this one as well. Yep. And try to unlock the device manually first. Okay. I think we are good to go now. Let's try to return it again. Oh, let me open the browser mobile and then you can see what's going on. So it's now try to resend the desired capability to the Appium server again. And the Appium server is now launching the target application. Click on try. And then around 30 seconds, because we already set the implicit weight um, in the FBM driver globally. So after 30 seconds, it will try to out of the loop and then continue. Let's see. And because we already put it in the twice 
uh, try test block. So even if you see the first, uh, the first Y happen, and now if you try to check whether we have something like specific condition on the screen or not, and then if not, if you try to swipe again, so it will be a little long because we need to wait around 30 seconds and then uh, till for the next action, but try to wait till it's finished first. So in this case, I think you can use something related to the fluent way uh, and then apply the logic. You see, uh, the next Y have just happened. But in this case, just let it at 34 by using the global implicit weight. But uh, uh, at least our logic works, right? Now, because we are not on the target the screen, so it will do again here. And then if you try to find, uh, to find out whether we are on the target the screen, if not, it will spy again. You see, and now you see it stopped, and you can see the code here 200. So that means it finds out we have some tech here on the card, so it detects that we are on the target the screen. So it will not do anything else because this condition is not set to five anymore, even the swipe time is not five. Right. So this is the logic for you to swipe until we see some specific condition on the mobile screen to trigger some some action. So again, I just want to mention that um, it depends on your uh, on your testing application, and then you can specify your own the specific condition. So in this case, I specify my own uh, condition for this application, but for you may be different. But the, the logic here that is uh, something like you need to trigger something related to swipe time and the condition whether we are on the target, uh, the desired um, mobile screen or not, and then we can trigger the logic inside. And I just wanna, uh, I just wanna mention again that we need to put in the try cast block when you try to do something like this because if we are not in the target the screen, that means we will throw down something like you know. Uh, the element is not found, and if you don't put it in try test block, our uh, program will be ter terminated for that error. Okay, so try to explore around. Bye for now, and see you in the next lesson. We will talk more about how to create a utility class to handle swipe action.